Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for it looks like you're looking for LinkedIn tips, how can I help? Before we start, I have a few quick things to go over. Please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone, including our speakers. We want the reactors to be a place everyone feels welcome. Please ask questions using the live YouTube or Twitch chat. In the chat, I'll also be sharing some links to the Reactor Meetup page and monthly newsletter if you're interested in checking out what other sessions we have coming up. If you haven't already, please check in using our event check-in at aka.ms slash reactor check-in with event ID 14482. By checking in, you'll receive a link that goes along with today's session. Um, today's session will also be added to our Reactor YouTube channel in 24 to 48 hours. And finally, I will share a link to the Reactor survey towards the end. If you have a few minutes, we greatly appreciate your feedback. I will now pass it over to Chloe and Gwen. That song, ah, that song. Nothing better. <laughs> it gets me so pumped up every time I hear that song. I'm like, I'm ready to look at resumes. Like it's, it's great. <laughs> it's such a banger. Gwen, how are you doing on this fine Tuesday? Hello, hello. Like clockwork. Uh, uh, excited. This, I, this is like one of my favorite times of the week. We just come, hang out. The chat's here listen to some tunes, answer some questions, hang out with you. Come on. I wore my collage shirt for you because I figured, you know, I I have a BA in drama and uh, this this feels appropriate for like a, a an artistic degree to wear the collage, collage. Uh, t-shirt. <laughs> um, how has your week been, Gwen? I've been thinking a lot about LinkedIn this week because that's what our episode is all about today. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it was it was great that we, we selected this the subject because I had been meaning to go in and, 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 and fix mine because there's some things that I just like kind of like forgot about. So I'm glad we're uh, we're diving into this today. 
Yeah. And oh, did you get the Microsoft ice cream? Most important follow-up question from last week's episode. So for anybody who didn't know, or or I don't know if we actually mentioned this on the air, but there was Windows 11, is that right? Yeah. Ice cream that got, tell us everything about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so there was a, the collab from this uh, a New York City uh, ice cream shop called Mikey's. Mikey Likes It. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was like this blueberry but also had pieces of like cookie dough and some jam in it oh my gosh uh, delish. They, were giving, they were giving away scoops for free but i ended up getting a pint <gasps> it was so good <laughs> did it taste like so, windows like when you heard it did you hear like the windows startup sound <laughs> honestly yeah <laughs> <laughs> it looked really delish like it was i shared it on like twitter blue. people hi yeah, it, dr it, it, g Oh my goodness, Dr. G has entered the chat. Hello, Dr. Guthles. Um, our favorite. Our fave. We love, we love a friend, friend of, the, of show. the show. Friend of the show. Jinx. Um, <laughs> Y'all, what a, what a week this has been. I'm really excited to dive. So for anybody who hasn't tuned into the show before, this is How Can I Help? Um, which, of course, is a play on our, our dear friend Clippy up here. And this whole series is about job search, interviewing, all that kind of fun stuff. We've been, we had our intro uh, episode last week, but mm -hmm. we're diving into different topics. And today is LinkedIn, or as my dad likes to call it, Linky Dawn, because he <laughs> couldn't figure out why he was getting so many emails from this this service called Linky Dawn. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited. Uh, I I don't I wouldn't say I spend a lot of time on on LinkedIn on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but I did this last week getting ready for this and. I think you know we've we've talked a little bit about how we wanted to structure the show, but what is your relationship to LinkedIn, Gwen? Like, how how have you used it in your career? What does it mean to you? G give me your personal essay. Absolutely, I think LinkedIn for me now is something that I I give it some time every now and then just to make sure it's up to date and I've got you know everything that I need in there. But it isn't something I necessarily check every single day. But there was a time in my career where I was in there. I was about it. I was like, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit more. But like, you know, building the brand, building the portfolio, featuring oh, yes. some content that was aligned with with um, what I wanted to showcase in my story and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that I have that I, that I try to keep up to date. Uh, and I, and I, I feel like it's also been a great networking tool. And I feel like there's a lot of, I, I wouldn't consider myself one of them, but I've met many like LinkedIn power users, you know, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm like connecting to a power source. <laughs> We're doing it live. Um, but I feel like when I go on LinkedIn, there's kind of two, one of two flavors that I'll encounter. Well, maybe three, right? right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> not to say recruiters aren't normal, but there's recruiters. Um, okay. So usually there's going to be recruiters on there who are reaching out to me. I've also been a recruiter in a previous life. So as a recruiter, spent a lot of time on LinkedIn and, and we'll talk a lot about that on this episode. Mm -hmm. um, and then also I feel like there's people like us who go on there periodically, update it, make sure it's a kind of a living, breathing record of like what we've done and our work experience. Because it is pretty much like, I would say the standard in the industry of like, oh, Absolutely. you don't have a LinkedIn. Like it, it's pretty like having LinkedIn, I think is pretty important. Um, and then I feel like there's people who are power users who are like posting on there every day, like a social media platform. You can stream from LinkedIn. I found out recently, like there's all, maybe we should be streaming to LinkedIn. <laughs> maybe we'll be doing that in the future. Um, we should be. But I, I wouldn't consider myself a power user per se um but i do get a lot of great interaction on there when i do post things which is cool <laughs> definitely I th one thing i like well we'll dive into this a little more but i really like that you can sort of endorse or give recommendations i like that it's like a person yeah touch. is your microphone weird or is my microphone is my let's see let us know in the chat how our sound's doing <laughs> is what is the audio of one of us bad yes but maybe it's me. It might be me. We will figure it out. Let us know in the chat. Also, let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. Um, we, of course, are over here. I'm joining from Oakland, California. Gwen is over in New York, near our New York reactor. Um, but we'd love to know what brings you here. Gwen's microphone sounds a little funky. Yeah, you did sound like an alien for a second, Gwen. It was cool, though. I kind of liked it, honestly. <laughs> it was very like Mars Attacks. 
Let me <laughs> let me rejoin. Can you hold yes, it down for a little perfect. bit? Perfect. I right. hold it down. I kind of liked the um, reminded me of like an alien thing. Um, okay, LinkedIn. So for those of you who did not know, or maybe didn't watch our previous stream, and if you haven't watched our previous stream that we did last Tuesday, you can go to aka.ms slash how can we help the letter U. Um, but we talked a lot about LinkedIn. We talked about my previous life as a recruiter. So I worked as a recruiter for a long time. If you've ever been a recruiter before, you know how much time you spend on LinkedIn, looking at people's LinkedIn's. Um, you kind of get a sense of like, what is a very thorough, uh, very, you know, a LinkedIn that really showcases work versus one where you're like, oh, okay, this person worked at Disney, but I don't know what they did there. Um, so I'm really excited to dive into that. And there's a lot of kind of interesting, cool features that we'll be showcasing today as well, including you can actually build a resume from LinkedIn. Fun fact, we'll be going into that. Ooh, greetings from Vancouver, Canada. I miss Vancouver. I love Vancouver so much. I've been thinking about Canada a lot lately and um, wish I was wish I was over there at a Tim Hortons hanging out. Um, I'm trying to think what else we'll be doing. Oh, we'll be going over LinkedIn. Also, we'll be posting some summary blog posts from these episodes. So take um, have a look out for that. Those are going to be posted on to Dev2. And those are really just going to break down all of the different links and details and things that we'll be going over in this series. But let me know your thoughts on LinkedIn in the chat because I know that LinkedIn – is one of those platforms that, again, like one said, you're either, you know, you're either power user, you're kind of there and periodically updating things um, to make your resume kind of match what's on your LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to tell a couple interesting LinkedIn stories. Ooh, we've got Augusta, Georgia, joining us from the famous uh, Dr. G Shed in Washington State. We love to see it. Oh, my goodness. We have so many different people from Raleigh, Egypt, Ecuador. Amazing. So much fun. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And let us, I love that we have so many people from all around the world. And what's great about LinkedIn is it's it's pretty universal, right? So let us know what brought you to this stream today. Was it something specific about LinkedIn that you wanted to learn? Um, we're going to be doing some live updates to our LinkedIn. So that'll be pretty fun. Um, we thought like, oh, we'll get our LinkedIn's prepped for this episode and get them in a really good place to like showcase the best but then we thought oh we'll just like update them live on the show and we can show people how we make the decisions and what we decide to add but I would love to know in the chat what features are you currently using from LinkedIn um what features do you want more information on as far as like how should I be using this what should I be using on my LinkedIn um and let us know if you have any LinkedIn stories like stories of getting jobs from LinkedIn, or maybe you made a connection on LinkedIn. Oh my gosh, I have so many to share. I don't even know where to begin, but I would love to hear, I would love to hear yours. Um, okay, so Gwen will be joining us shortly here. She's just getting some audio issues figured out. But in the meantime, I'm actually going to bring up my LinkedIn. Um, and again, just to share a little bit of history on me. So uh, we, we went into great detail on the previous episode on what our backgrounds were coming into tech. So you can go and check that out. But in a previous life, I was actually a recruiter. Um, I worked as a recruiter for quite a bit of time um, and also did a little bit of like recruiting um, for funsies as well, if you can believe it. I was a sourcer, which if you've never worked as a recruiter before at a larger company or maybe um, – you know, we're, we're thinking beyond startups here, so typically a larger company, there are these roles in recruiting called sourcers, who's, it's an entry-level job for recruiters, fun fact. And your job really is you're given this set of bullet points, right? So it can be anything from like, we're looking for a candidate that has X amount of experience in Docker, or maybe, you know, it's, it's KubeCon, maybe it's Kubernetes, right? <laughs> um, and you're given this list, you're saying, we, we need someone with this background, experience, expertise, and it's your job as a sourcer to go through LinkedIn and literally look for people who have those skills. And I'm going to bring up my page here in just a sec and share my screen. LinkedIn.com, LinkedIn.com. Okay, sharing my screen. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to make it full screen so everybody can see it. Um, hello, I'd like you to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. Ooh, we have a great question here in the chat. How do I network with it? That is a great question, Jeremy. We'll definitely get to that on the stream for sure, Zs. So I'm going to navigate on over to my profile. 
and let's see. Oh, I've got all of this different messages here. I'm going to hide all of these. Okay. So there's a couple pieces of LinkedIn that I want to show you real quick. Um, first of all, we've got the cover photo here. So it's kind of similar to a social media platform, right? You've got your cover image. You've got your profile image. I think that a profile image is pretty important. Um, I know a lot of people tend to use avatars or maybe um, not something that that represents maybe what your physical appearance looks like. I think because LinkedIn sort of does serve as something that you're doing for jobs and they want to get an idea of who is this person, what do they do, it never hurts to um, to have an actual photo on there. I have this photo from a, a Grace Hopper conference thing that I did a while ago. Um, I've got my title here. So I see a lot of people who with their titles will put, you know, uh, <laughs> endless possibilities that you know, new prospective company. So as I said, sourcers' jobs are to look through um, different candidates and find those qualities. So really think of your LinkedIn in terms of SEO, right? So like what keywords, what different things are important to have in your profile? So a sourcer, let's say that like I'm a Glenn's back, Glenn's back. All right. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes, you sound perfect. Okay. Perfection. Awesome. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, miss? I was just going through my LinkedIn here, Gwen. I was just doing a tour to LinkedIn of how mm -hmm. I make some decisions on my profile. And I was telling all the folks that what we're going to do today, we thought about prepping it and making it look like all beautiful and everything, but we want to do it live on the air and like show people why we make the decisions and what we want to update. So I was just sharing. I used to be a sourcer back in the day, was a recruiter worked as a sourcer and that's an entry level job where you're going through different applications and you are um, essentially finding people who kind of fit the bill of, of this job description you're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So you have everything from like X amount of experience in this, X amount of make, like maybe a background in this specific field. So it's saying that using keywords in your LinkedIn is key because sourcers who are going to be looking for candidates like you are going to look for those words in your profile. So putting something here. So I was saying a lot of people put, you know, instead of their job title or maybe like putting the name of the uh, the job title that they're looking for might put mm -hmm. something like new possibilities that endless opportunity. And you're not going to find a lot of um, search terms in that <laughs> or people mm -hmm. reaching out to you without those keywords. So if you are looking for, let's say, a sales engineer role or, oh my goodness, a developer advocate role or, an, or a junior software engineer, put that somewhere in your anywhere in your LinkedIn bio, because that way when sourcers and recruiters are actually looking for folks who have that experience, you're popping up in their search. Um, so really think of this in terms of SEO, not of the greater, you know, search engines like Bing or Google or anything like that. But in terms of LinkedIn, recruiters are literally behind the scenes. Like you get like a premium account and you're like, I'm hacking the mainframe. Okay. I want to look for candidates that have these words in their profile and have this amount of experience and blah, blah, blah. So be very, um, be very strategic with what keywords Here's you a use on this page. Though. Yes. How do you strike the balance between, you know, using the right keywords, but not coming off like, you know, just throwing everything in there, just all the buzzwords possible. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like hashtag teamwork, hashtag like, every single thing. Exactly. Um, that's a great question. I think, you know, when you and I have had this conversation before about authenticity, like mm -hmm. when you're making a social media presence or even your YouTube channel, um, you don't ever want to come out in any sort of marketing or branding or, or personal branding that doesn't feel authentic, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling like as you write your, like let's go down to my bio here. Like it's not, hasn't been updated in, in a while, but I specifically, and do as I say, not as I do, because um, I used to have a joke, I still have a joke in here that says I'm one of the 200 plus thought leaders in crypto and blockchain and I still know absolutely nothing about crypto and blockchain. <laughs> That would explain why a lot of crypto and blockchain people reach out to me because people are do you see what i mean like people are searching that and they're finding uh, it in my profile it's all yeah. if you, you guys can check out that article later it's actually very circular in this conversation that we're having but these are things that you need to think about like let's say that you go and decide like i don't want to be a developer advocate anymore don't leave me but if you decide i want to be a zookeeper let's say <laughs> like you really want to put those zookeeper keywords in here so other zookeepers I don't know. Are there special recruiters for zookeepers? That would be great. Um, Probably. But yeah, um, let's take a look at yours. 
one. I'm going to find you. Are we? I would like to add you to are my we, professional network. Are we LinkedIn. connected? Are we I think, linked? I think we just linked. We Let's just see. linked. Gwen. Gwen, there you are. Second. <gasps> okay, connect with me immediately. Let's connect live. I'm going to accept. There we go. Wow. We connected. I'm honored, honestly. Live on the air. What you just saw, everyone, was networking. <laughs> <laughs> Gwen, we had a question about networking. Um, what are your thoughts on networking on LinkedIn? Like, do you have any opinions on that? I think it was here. I'll bring up the, the question here. How do I network with LinkedIn? Do you have any personal yeah. stories on that? I, I personally do enjoy LinkedIn because for that aspect, because I'll have a lot of people reach out after like a session or after they see a YouTube video and they're very specific about like, hey, um, yeah. You know, I saw this and had a specific question on it. And I love those kind of interactions because, you know, like, all right, this person, like, you know, is not going to just be some super generic or super general, like, hi, this is me. Let's connect for like no purpose. There's actually purpose behind the conversation. And yeah. I do the same. Like I go out and if I see something that I, I enjoyed or want to talk about some uh, to someone about something specific, I'll sort of reference what it is that I want to talk to talk about and then try to get the connection there or try to, you know, maybe in the comments or, or, or some sort of interaction there. Um, I really do like, like, like Nick, cause everyone's sharing their, like their professional stuff on there. So it's easier to find people who, you know, you can professionally talk to. And it's a very, I feel like LinkedIn really serves this, this purpose that was much needed on the internet, which is like, absolutely. where do you connect with someone for business reasons? Right? Like you can't really message. I mean, I do get a lot of like, like, business Twitter. messages on Twitter. Um, yeah. YouTube, my mileage will vary. Um, Instagram, I'm just sending you memes on Instagram, Gwen, 24-7. <laughs> sending Love you my them. trash. Keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's cool because LinkedIn really serves as that place where you can kind of share. Like, no website really has it where you can kind of put what your work accomplishments are. And it's right. kind of like your space to brag about the amazing work that you do. And Definitely. I can't think of another. I mean, maybe I've used AngelList before. Um, I've used, I, but I can't think of a lot of other, like even on Craigslist back in the day, uh, this is how old I am. I used to look for jobs on Craigslist <laughs> post-college. There was no like profile for that. So this is really your opportunity. Like there's a lot of customization things with LinkedIn that we're going to get into today that I think are Definitely. really cool. Um, but networking wise, like, yeah, I would say this is, this is where... Twitter is where all the like live conversations are happening. And then I feel like LinkedIn is where like all of the career conversations are happening. Perhaps. I would, I would agree. Definitely. Okay. Gwen, tour us through, do you want to share your screen or do you want me we to can just do tour yours. us through? Okay. Yeah. Let's do, should we start with the, 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 the head, the headliner? Yes. We've got the name. Good job. So far. So good. Um, this is great. You have YouTuber in there, which is so perfect for like mm -hmm. any sort of people who might be looking for someone to develop content. Like even when you're employed, LinkedIn is still a great tool. I get a lot Absolutely. of DMs from people to collab on stuff like, hey, we'd love to do like a video on this thing, like with Microsoft. Um, and I love that you have YouTuber. I want to add that to my LinkedIn. I'm going to be you editing mine in the background. <laughs> Um, okay, people you may know, we, we scroll down a little bit here. Um, oh, you're using Featured. Featured is my favorite hidden talk about LinkedIn it. feature. Um, tell me, tell me how you chose what to put in your Featured section. To me, it's the thing, it's the, the, the things that I most want to talk about in terms of stuff that I've created, right? So Absolutely. if I want you to know, so if I had like a one liner about myself, it's like, here's who I am, check, learn more about what I do here. And I kind of just use featured also to sort of um, like reinforce my like description or summary of myself, right? It's like, all right, here's yeah. sort of what I am more, learn more here, that kind of stuff. Um, it's great because, you know, it's like one of the first things that people see when they come into their profile. And what I love about it is you, so you have this ability, of course, with your, with your bio or anything like that to like put more info about yourself or the about mm -hmm. section, I should say. But what's mm -hmm. really cool about the featured section, and I too utilize the featured section. I need to update mine. Um, let's see. Go back to mine here. I put, just like you said, Gwen, anything that I'm particularly proud of, like a blog post, and it 
does videos, it does blogs, it does a whole bunch of stuff. And it's stuff that you should think of like if like your about me section is here's the words that describe what I do. And this is like I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and show you what I make. That's, and, that's the key yeah. part. I think you saying that is so important. It's like you get in, you get a section, you get your about section to talk about, you know, who you are, all that kind of stuff. And then you got to use this feature section to like back that up. This is a great question, Alex. So I was just going to answer this. What happens if you're not creating content? So I actually first saw this feature from a designer who was putting their design portfolio in here. So mm -hmm. just to show you all real quick, if I go to this edit, or I guess I'll do the, the ad, you can literally share a link. Oops, let me go back here. You Maybe can like a do GitHub a GitHub repo, a GitHub Maybe. repo media links media, articles yeah. maybe there was a write-up about a project that you worked on that like mm -hmm. you're particularly maybe you did a launch anything like that i've seen this feature utilized in such unique and interesting ways i've seen people record actual videos that are like hi welcome to my linkedin let me tell you about myself you That's can get as detailed idea. as a little that trailer. we should do that we should be like hi we're Gwen and Chloe, and we do a show where we help people with links. <laughs> we should have done that in preparation for this. Um, but yeah, the first time that I saw this was actually someone just sharing their portfolio or a link. You can even put a link to your portfolio here or your About Me page even. Like you don't even have to put the links to all the rest of the stuff. Um, articles. And what's cool is all of these have different formats. So like link is different than articles. So if you go into mine, I think some of these are articles versus some are links that I uploaded. Um, but I love that feature because just like you said, it's like it's like a best of, right? It's what you put reel? in the like yeah, like a like a highlight reel of like all the yeah. but um great question about if it's not content. I think truly maybe you worked on an open source project that you're really mm -hmm. proud of. Maybe there's um you can even link to a tweet in here. <laughs> I think I I'll, used to have a tweet from Smash Mouth in here. <laughs> also, I, I, I will add that just because you're not into creating content or you don't create content consistently, doesn't mean you don't have maybe like a blog that you post every now and yes. then or something like that, right? You don't have to be a professional content creator or anything like that to, to utilize this feature. This is really for you to showcase whatever that is not text in terms of like what you can fit in your about section. Um, really utilize that because it's, it's, it pops out. It really does pop out. I have an idea. How about I add something to my featured section live on the air? Let's do it. Okay. I want to add a link to my last series, subtle plug for aka.ms slash beboob replay. Shout out. Oops, not this, not this, not like this. Okay. <laughs> Here, I'm going to hide my screen, then I'm going to do it. Um, but I'm going to add a link to my series that I just finished with the reactor with Ornella. Um, in the meantime, ooh, we have loved your interview on Lab Every Day channel. Gave me hope. Gwen, what was this interview? Is that yeah, you? I, uh, Lab Every yeah lab every day is uh a he's he's a person who does a, a lot of uh, interviews with people who are in the tech space but uh has like a networking background a network networking engineer background and we sort of just had a chat about my my journey into into the space and we got to answer a bunch of questions and it was it was fantastic you know we love we love talking about this stuff because you also have like a non-traditional background into tech yeah. so yeah it, it was great and i'm very happy that it, it uh it, it, andrew that it gave you hope I mean, now you can pair that up with what we're doing here in terms of like fixing up uh, resumes, LinkedIn cover letters and all that kind of stuff. And, and then hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll have what you need to sort of, you know, feel confident, take the next step and apply for roles that you're interested in. As I said on the last episode, we're doing makeovers, <laughs> LinkedIn and resume makeovers. I can't wait to, to redo mine. I look at it now. I'm just like, this is <laughs> so plain. <laughs> So I'm going to add one in here. Do I need to? Oh, I guess I'll pr press the add button. That's helpful. So I grabbed this link here. Um, I'm actually going to do a short link for it, which is aka.ms slash replay. And this is a link to the series that I just did that has all these different videos and descriptions and stuff. And I feel like, OK, this is a good like overall view of this thing that I produced. So I'm going to put mm -hmm. this in here. And I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to make it. Oh, articles published on LinkedIn. That's a key differentiator here. Shows link to web content, shows content posted to LinkedIn. I'm going to do links and I am going to just paste that cute little short link in there. Cute, okay. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna save it. Oh, cute, it pulls in the, uh, like a thumbnail-ish or some, some sort of. And I believe, let's try it out with linking to one of these individual ones. So if I do like, okay. 
aka.ms slash beep boop replay one, I want to say. Yes. Um, aka.ms slash beep boop. Oops, not S, M, S, slash, beep, boop, replay, one. There's a solid question in here that I, I'd love to get to once you're, once you're done. Yeah, and, uh, here, I'll bring it up here. This one here? Yeah, that's fantastic. They say if you find a job, add each network with people on LinkedIn at the company to increase your chances. Best way to go about this without being annoying. Fantastic question, because I've been on both sides. I've, I've been approached by people who were interested uh, in similar roles that I've been in, but I've also reached out to people. Mm -hmm. I find that the 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 best chance of getting a response is when you're extremely specific, right? You're like, yes. I've reached out like, hey, how you doing? This is my name. I saw this uh, role. I see that you work there. Was wondering uh, if you had a few moments to just chat about like some questions that I had about the role. Um, and oftentimes people would be like, yeah, let's hop on a call or something like that. Or yeah, like I feel I feel like we underestimate how much we like talking about stuff that we do yeah and when you understand that like you know tools like linkedin give you the option to like message people for a reason it's because yeah like people like talking about what they do um uh, but you know you got to put in the work and not just make it like hey uh, i'm interested in this role that's it like or, or, all right well what do i do with that right so like make sure you you know you, you got some questions prepped and all that kind of stuff um and you, you know reach out to, to several people just because like one doesn't get back to you doesn't mean uh you can't reach out to 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 a few others um just like you know try to not be spammy try not to like copy paste the same exact message to like everyone because you know people at the same company are gonna they're gonna like you know talk and 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 you know if there's someone who's like super spammy they'll be like oh this person reached out on linkedin and then you know that's gonna sort of like maybe ruin your chances or something but yeah put in the work to um to to be someone who's who's worth having a conversation right I just dropped a link in the chat to this article, which my friend Allie wrote. It's it's part comedy, part very, very good information on how to message someone on the internet. And this Love came it. from the very weird messages that I get on a constant basis asking, you know, to pick my brain, collab, ask me on a date, whatever it may be. Um, but Allie goes into really great detail here on like, say, you know, what approach you should take, how specific you should be. She even has an example in here on like, hey, Chloe, I loved your keynote at DjangoCon. I saw it and blah, blah, blah. Thanks for the enlightening talk. Or even how to ask for what you need. Because just like Gwen said, we get messages all the time that are like, I'd love to pick your brain. And I'm like, great. Um, <laughs> I yeah, don't have time to do that. And let me know what you need. Maybe there's a video that we could send you instead. Like there's so many different resources that we can send Definitely. your way if it's asked specifically. Um, but this is a really great, I mean, you really do want to be specific with your ask at the end of the day. Um, oh, we've got this comment here that says, uh, Yes, I can speak to that. I reached out to individuals who are in IT and expressed my interest in going into that field. I checked with them to see how they're doing, get to know them personally. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I have a good example of this. Like after our last stream, a recruiter actually reached out to connect on LinkedIn. Was like, hey, I just saw your stream with Chloe on this topic. I'm actually a recruiter. Would love to just stay connected and keep up to date with your work. I was like, fantastic. And, yeah. and where I'm at, where I'm at with LinkedIn is I don't accept everybody, but mm -hmm. when I have messages like that with like purpose, I do. I, my favorite, this is not so much a LinkedIn story, but it's a, I think it's a relevant networking story. So I always advise everyone out there, it never hurts to ask. The worst thing that can happen if you ask someone percent. is they won't know. reply yeah. or they'll say, no, I'm too busy right now. Yeah. Um, and the story I love to tell here is when I was going to my boot camp when I was attending Hackbrite, I was posting on like Facebook and Instagram, you know, about my hashtag tech journey. <laughs> And this lovely, lovely man, uh, Fred, reached out to me who used to run a theater company over in Alameda where I did shows. And it was one of those messages that was like, hey, I have a nephew that works in computers. You should talk to him. And I was like, oh, OK, whatever. That ended up being the co-founder of GitHub, uh, Scott Chacom. <laughs> and we ended up getting coffee. And I was able to, you know, it was one of those experiences where you're like, I don't want to go to this person and just be like, I want to pick your brain. Like you want to come with specific questions. You want to know what you're asking. You want to know what the agenda is going to be just like you would in any meeting. And I think you should think of that initial message that you send to someone almost like a, here's the agenda of what I want to talk about. Like mm -hmm, when definitely. you have a non-traditional background, I want to get into YouTube videos. I would love to talk to you about how to get my channel started and what to do with my LinkedIn. And sh then Gwen can be like, Great, happy to chat. Also, here's a video Chloe and I did on LinkedIn. 
You know what I mean? Like it's so much that makes the uh, back and forth less back and forth. It makes you're easy and communicating directly your needs. Um, so communicate your needs. Important lesson. iTunes, what that, are you doing? <laughs> that first that first impression also matters because you may you never know who you might be able to have a conversation with and like the impression you might make and that could lead into even bigger opportunities that you never expected. So put in the work and then you'll you'll start to see that people will 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 get back to you. Yeah, Brendan Moore says, I'd love to pick your brain. No, nope. Stop saying this. Be specific about a need and or offer people conversation. Absolutely. I think there was love a it. quote from um Kim Creighton once in a talk where she's like, if you want to pick my brain, here's my consulting fee or something to that regard <laughs> that like I've kept with me, with me for so long. Um, yeah, absolutely. And yes, that is the Fred that I speak of, Brendan North. Shout out to Fred Chacon. We, we love him. Um, uh, ooh, so look what I did real quick. I added that overall series page and it grabbed this image, but then I added a link directly to the first blog post in here which will bring people to here. So I think what I'm going to do, just make this decision live on the air, is I'm going to go through and remove this one. And now I've got my Beep Boop series and my featured, which I got to add my, oh, how can I help in here too? Maybe I'll add the playlist while we're in here too. I definitely have to do that as well. Um, let's see, activity. I think this shows up for other people as well. I, this is, interesting it shows you what the person has here let's look at yours Gwen it shows what the person has liked and interacted with like recently it's I, I truly I don't use it that much it feels kind of creepy like when you look at someone's Venmo <laughs> like history oh, yeah. or something. Um, but it's there yeah okay I can see yours let's see what did you do Ooh, you're liking people leaving Microsoft. That's not, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it shows how active you are on here, which I think is, you know, shows people how active you are on the website, I guess. You know, you know what might be useful with this and that I have done before is like, all right, I connected with this person. Let me see what they're looking into. Let me see what they're reading, yeah. what they're sharing, that kind of stuff. And you never know what you might pick up from that. Uh, you might find a resource that's fantastic or something like that. So totally. I can understand its use. Actually, now that you said it, Gwen, I have ended up, okay, I take everything back. I have looked at this feature on other people's pages and gone down different rabbit holes of like content on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. shout out to LinkedIn for getting me to view your content. It's sort <laughs> of like a timeline this first party. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is like a timeline. It's like, it's like when you go and see what, you know, what your ex-boyfriend's been liking on Instagram, like a creep. <laughs> <laughs> Same exact thing, right? <laughs> yeah, like looking at a Venmo history. Um, okay, you've got your about here. Mm -hmm. My about is very long. I actually want, I don't think I'll do it live on the air because I usually need to talk out loud, but um, I think yours is the perfect length. And let's see, you have, hi, I'm Gwen, regional advocate at Microsoft and YouTuber. You've got those keywords in there. So like, perfection um started to help us scroll so this is great you're telling your whole story is this so gwen we're going to be talking about this a lot more on other episodes but mm -hmm. is this kind of your elevator your self elevator pitch that you usually give in written form absolutely whenever there's like a bio required or some sort of description that people need about me or people just ask me who are you i'm like this, yeah this is me this is you know and i i'm if once you get to know me i'm sort of more of like a like a you know, sh straightforward, like not too many words, but you know, the kind of person. And I feel like my, my about section reflects that of me. Um, it's like just, you know, that that's just, just who I am, who I kind of tell people what I do and things like that. And that's what it really should be. Mine, do as I say, not as I do, because I have too much in here. I need to update my LinkedIn. I have that I'm in European and US citizen, <laughs> just because, <laughs> you know, in this economy. Um, and you have your socials in here? That's what I was wondering. Like, Ooh, do should I? Should there be an area to highlight your socials? And if so, should it be your about section? Because I was trying to figure that out for myself. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add my link tree in here because my link tree link links to my Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of that different stuff. So I think what I'll probably do after this stream is I'm going to remove this silly, silly thing here about this old blog post that I have and maybe replace that with my... Um, with my link tree. And then a lot of this, these, my bio is updated since this quite a bit. So I'm going to change that. Um, but I think that Gwen's like truly is the perfect length here. Um, I like that. I don't have to click see more on yours. I have to click see more on mine. I don't like that. Um, 
But so far, so good, Gwen. You're nailing it. Ooh, look at that sweet reactor uh, New York office cover image. I feel like I, was, I need a clippy cover image. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> I, was, I was just about to bring up, it looks like my audio might have cut out again. I think I have to rejoin once more. Oh, but I love the no. alien voice. Okay, we'll, we'll wait for you. I'll, one, I'll hold down the minute. floor. <laughs> Ooh, Helmet Chili Gaming says, this is very timely for me. I'll digest this and replay. Hooray. Oh, and Andrew, thank you. That's so sweet. Um, Y'all are pulling out so much value in this video. Many thanks. Oh, I'm so glad, Andrew, because... I'm oddly – okay, so I was a recruiter in a previous life, but I really help helping my friends with their LinkedIn and resume. I think it, it's the former recruiter in me, but also I'm like, it's makeover time. Like I love turning something into a more aesthetically pleasing, you know, be it a Word doc or PDF or, or LinkedIn. So happy to help. Please ask your questions in the chat. Um, ooh, Brendan, yes. Videos have been huge for my LinkedIn. Got to update that. So I I totally agree with that. Um, I have some, I need to add a bunch of videos in here. So that's probably going to be on my to-do list post-stream. I might even do some of those live on here. But I love that you can click right into these videos. Like if you click those links, they go right directly to the video, which is really great. Opens it in a new tab. Um, as far as other things that I want to add in here, I want to put more of my Dev2 articles that I want to feature, more of my videos that I've been doing lately. I just made a bunch of great Imagine Cup training content that I want to add. But what I should also share, and as you said, Brendan, like the video feature here, you can also add videos here, which I love. So for example, at my previous company at uh, Codefresh, I did a bunch of video content. So if you are a recruiter and you come in and you're like, I wonder what Chloe worked on. And again, if you're a designer and engineer, maybe these are open source projects. It doesn't have to be video content. This is just purely a lot of the work that I do. Um, but I can actually click through like a carousel. Here's me and Brandon I'm, Minnick, a throwback. I'm, this I'm is, back, I think. You're back. It's beautiful. You don't, I like the alien voice, but I'm glad to have you back. <laughs> I, I have no idea what's Laptops, audio. It's okay. I had a, I had myself echoing in my own ear for three minutes on a previous stream, and I, I understand <laughs> the, the power of live streaming. Um, I was just showing Gwen that you can actually add, like similarly, you can add these featured things up here. You can add them to the individual jobs. So, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So I love this because I was just saying that when I was a developer evangelist at Century, most of my content was video based, which is really hard to put mm -hmm. into words, right? Like, what Definitely. does this look like? What does it do? This is literally the first, this is the first time I met Brandon Minnick, if you can believe it. We did this video at my previous company. Um, but I have every single video that I did. Here's a talk that I gave at GitHub Universe when I worked at Sentry. This is like a series that I did. Here's a video I did with Microsoft, a collab. Um, I've got a bunch of blog posts, Sentry Scouts event pics, like all kinds of, I literally have pictures. Here's another. So let's say you're an event planner, right? Like I believe this is just a link to a Google photos album for Century Scouts. So I can show people what my event looked like. I used to run this camp themed meetup. So a recruiter can literally, or a hiring manager or whoever that may be, literally has a direct link into anything that I want to show them that's relevant to my um, to my job. And you can update on. this uh, like description or the title of what it is that you're sharing. Like the- Let's see, let me see if I can edit. We'll go to this one. Here, let me edit my uh, thingy. So it's right, yeah. So it's right over here mm -hmm. at the bottom under add media. Ooh, I got a lot in here. And if I go, for example, so like, let's say this one. So this one, unfortunately, I think it pulls okay. the image from, so it looks like this image is broken from that article. But mm -hmm. I wish LinkedIn, if you're listening, would love to be able to update the image with a cute little thumbnail. Um, but yeah, love this feature. Love that I can go in and like add different things. Like I always recommend here, you'll notice there's a drop down with like the logo. You ideally want to select the one that has the logo that other people at your company are connecting with. I say this because when you click into that, so with a company like Microsoft is gigantic, it's a little bit different to see that. But if you mm -hmm. actually click on the job you can see like other people who work here um you can see like you know the the company usually has their own page i think microsoft has this as well it's just going to be like a lot bigger because microsoft is a yeah. gigantic company um but when i as a sourcer 
let's say I'm I'm a I'm a recruiter. I'm putting on my recruiter hat, um, and I am looking for someone who's looking in the error logging, or let's say a Docker CI CD company. I'm looking at evangelists who've worked in the Docker space, or I'm looking for people who work on Docker. I can go mm -hmm. through here. I can be like, oh, interesting. What is CodeFresh? I want to learn more about CodeFresh. Okay, wow, it's got this many employees. Like, here's a little bit about the company. I can so it, it that way the recruiter doesn't have to leave page. You know what I mean? Right. So always make sure you're matching with that um, with that drop down. Ooh, I'm also going to share this banner across the bottom. There's a really good learn module that uh, we checked out when we were first um, putting this together. If you go to mm -hmm. aka.ms slash how can I help links to, um, it'll take you there. So we'll leave that up there. Um, but Gwen, let's look at let's look at your page here. Um, Okay, so you've got Cloud Advocate, mm -hmm. perfect. You've got your Associate Community Training Architect, okay. Right. And you've got Power, <laughs> that's how I'm gonna pronounce that, it's all caps. Cool, 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 you've got all of these description things here. You got that. You like my bullet points? You like my formatting there? I love the bullet points. We need to add bullet points on this one. Yeah, I, I, I remember I told you I needed to, to, to spend some time updating and, and, and sort of write what, you know what it is, and this is what I recommend everyone. When you're in a role and you're actively doing it and you actively remember what you're doing, that is when you need to write down that stuff. Yeah. Because now, you know why I've been putting off writing down what I did at this at my gig at A Club Guru? It's because like, what did I do? Even though it was only a couple of months ago, I'm like, what? You're like, what? did I work? Did I, yes, did I? Did I do the work? Like <laughs> you want to know what my tip is for that? And this is one of those things that you have to remember it ahead of time when you get a new job. But I mm -hmm. oftentimes will save a copy of the job description and use that as a guide. So like I believe I this one maybe for Code Fresh, I got the job descriptions, or maybe yeah, I think I copied and pasted the job description part of it and use that as my guideline and been like, oh yeah, I also did this and this and was able to add more stuff in. That's why I really love this featured feature, featured feature, mm -hmm. sure. Featured, feature. <laughs> um, because there's so many things that you can't capture in just a bullet point, you know what I mean? Like you can say like shipped open source product, blah, 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 blah. But then like actually seeing the repo is different experience. Definitely. Um, or just additional or just backup. It's, it's great to be able to like dive into it more without it having like a essay because no one wants to read an essay come on yeah not, yeah. On, not on not on linkedin and i think that's the beauty of these bullet points gwen is like just like we mentioned on the last episode and we'll definitely be talking about this a lot more on our resumes episode is that next week we should do a little sneak preview of what next week's Ooh, be. is it um but when you're looking at a resume it takes a person like 10 seconds to know if this is a good candidate or, or qualified or not qualified candidate um mm -hmm. and really you want your eyes or the eyes of the hiring manager, the recruiter, whoever it may be, to see those words like, oh, interesting. Like, okay, yeah, this person knows this industry and what they're talking about. And I think we mentioned this in the last episode. I've seen two page resumes. I've seen three page resumes. One page. One. I mean, there's a little bit of an exception here with Link Linky Dawn, which is mm -hmm. that this is – I treat my LinkedIn as the ultimate exhaustive list like I literally put on my resume more info on LinkedIn because this okay. is like I never remove anything from it. I literally have like every job from the day I was born. <laughs> like going back <laughs> in the time machine, I've got Disney cast member at the Disney store. I've got Sephora on here. I've got all the way back to when I was a camp counselor. Um, wow. I, that's very intentional um, because if I ever do want to make a resume out of my LinkedIn, which we should definitely show how to do that on here. Um, so you can actually build a resume, Glenn. I think we we peeped at this the other day. But if you click we build did. resume under more, it will just build you a resume out of your LinkedIn profile. And I believe you can select like, you know, which jobs you want to use. Um, looks like you can just click create from profile here. Um, so you can like put all your desired job titles, go through that whole process. I would say that's like a good, it, it looks a little something like this. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would edit. This, Absolutely. I would not send uh, Just, Microsoft that I worked at the <laughs> Disney store. I don't think they need to know that. <laughs> but it's a good base template, right? Like, it's a good place to start. That's that's a fantastic tip that uh, I also keep all my work history, but 
I wouldn't say it was intentional. I just kind of filled it in and left it there. But now that you say that, and now that I know about this feature that I didn't know about before, it's cool because now you get, you download everything you need and then you just tailor your resume to which opportunity you're looking for. What if later on you're looking for something that's uh, more of like what you did before, then you just grab that experience and, and, and use it moving forward, right? Yeah, and I think like, so there's a couple things worth noting on here. I was gonna see if there's any way to like turn off or like, you know what I, what I mean when like you, um, when you have like a presentation slide and you're like, don't show these slides. It would be oh, cool okay. if there was a feature like that, but I like to keep this truly, cause I'm like, what if I forget where I worked? <laughs> like I, I want like a living, breathing record of like every single job I've ever had. Um, ooh, here's a good question. So I'm taking a certification. Should I put it on my profile after I've completed all the courses or after each course? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I, what do you think, Gwen? I, my advice here would be to take it once you've completed the certification. Yeah. Like once you have the certification, whenever that might be, if you completed all the courses, whatever, however long it took you, do it after that, right? Yeah. Um, and then if you're highlighting a certification, I don't know if certifications have ways of like, providing media, or maybe you can make a little, I don't know, well, they have this feature. The certification. If you add, Ooh. you can do the name, the organization. It looks like that's the only requirement. And then mm -hmm. you can just like, if there is a credential ID and you want to get fancy with that, you can. Um, but I think that's definitely worth, like once you finish it, for sure, adding in there. Um, that's kind of what LinkedIn is for, right? The certs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have a, a love-hate relationship with LinkedIn and, and certification sharing, um, but that's just me. <laughs> oh, here's, here's recommendations. That's another great feature. Um, if you have any folks who give you recommendations on LinkedIn, one of your connections, so to speak. You can also ask. I've been asked to give recommendations, and I've always taken it as like, oh, this is a great opportunity for me to summarize like our work with ship or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. And it's actually quite helpful for the people receiving uh, receiving the, the, the recommendation. So it's always nice to be like, hey, yeah, I can write a few words. I'm going to give you a recommendation. You have received no recommendations, Gwen. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's my homework. But you've written <laughs> some lovely ones for people. I love Definitely. that it shows you ones that you've written. It's like giving and giving back. Shout out to LinkedIn. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I, I There's this question here that I, I find interesting. What is your take on adding the percentage or num dollar amount you helped the organization save with a new process solution that you took part in implementing? Um, that's an interesting one. Cause I think I have listed that I saved like a certain amount of, I don't I necessarily think it was the amount of hours or percentage, Yeah. but when I'm asked more about it, I, I know what to say. I sort of just keep it kind of general. Um, Cause I don't really know why though. Any I guess, insight on that? Yeah. I mean, if you have cold, hard data that you – like, I'm always, like, facts, not feelings. And like we said earlier, how that, like, featured section is really, like, put in your money where your mouth is. I mm – -hmm. like, recently we were we were going through this process and going through some applications for something. And I was like, okay, there's a huge difference between someone saying, I am really good at making content and someone saying – I'm really good at making content and here's an example. You know what I mean? Definitely. Like being able to like support your feelings with evidence. So I would say if you have cold hard data where you're like, I saved the company this amount of money or I was able to like cut down SLA time by whatever it may be, put that mm -hmm. in there. If it's the truth, like this is your, this is one of the few opportunities on the internet where it's okay to humble brag, hashtag humble brag. Um, without getting called out. Like we all do it like on social media, but it's truly where this is where you should go all out and share. Here's what's great about me. Here's why I rule. Here's why you need to hire me. I slap. I am the coolest person you <laughs> are going to meet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you put it that way, I think that's like, a, it's great advice. Just make sure you can back it up because yes. since this is public facing and employers might potentially reach out to you from here make sure you, you know, you can walk the walk. Yes. And I see that oh. a lot. I see a lot of like really big claims on LinkedIn. And I would love to see more evidence-based claims on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> the power of data, truly. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Our, um, note to self, write one a recommendation. Everyone who's watched one's videos, write a recommendation for her. Connect with her on LinkedIn. Um, That'd this be is awesome. my 
my favorite uh, recommendation I have is from power user of LinkedIn, Matt. Chloe is Chloe good. Is good. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Matt, I, one of my favorite LinkedIn now, people. <laughs> I have to write one now that says Chloe slaps. Chloe slaps. I, that's what mine's <laughs> going to be for you, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> with more clarifying data of course um <laughs> let's see what else oh accomplishments hi okay i'm gonna be totally honest with you recruiter brain here i usually stop looking at someone's linkedin i'm gonna look at gwen's here um let me go to gwen so when i'm let's say i'm a hiring manager recruiter this is where my eyes are going i'm going like okay name cool mm -hmm. youtuber i've got that Ooh, she's got mm -hmm. some content here very cool okay i'm gonna have to look mm -hmm. at that in a second oh wow mike Microsoft. Oh my goodness. Um, a cloud guru. Oh my goodness. I want to know more. And then I go here and then I usually stop around here, which is good. Yeah. That's where yours stops. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I think there's an option to maybe remove. I don't want these. Uh, this is, this, this Accomplishments. is, it's SEO really. I mean, like it's where if you want keywords in, like Python or um, I have some silly things on here, like the scholarship what I got from got? college for musicals, um, probably not relevant. I need to, I have a bunch of my articles in here. So under publications and, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this, but like I have a bunch of, uh, it looks like links to some, they must've changed this feature. Cause I feel like these must've used to link to things. Mm -hmm. um, interests, uh, don't like anything bad, <laughs> I guess would be my advice here. Like Keep it profesh. Yeah, keep it profesh. Maybe don't follow like Dog the Bounty Hunter on here. I guess, <laughs> like, you know what? Who, who I'm following the North Face. Very profesh. Uh, you know things. Things relevant to your. Uh, what else they have on here? Schools, groups. I guess there's not really anything unprofessional on LinkedIn because it's a professional network, Gwen. Okay. I mean, you never know. You never know. <laughs> um, causes Chloe cares about. I mean, I could do without this section. I can I remove it? Let's see. Oh, no, I'm stuck with it. Why don't you have that, Gwen? Is that, Can like, you remove it at the top if you go to, like... Um, oh, like, edit right. something? Yeah, like, maybe in more or something oh, like that. This? Or something there. No. Edit. no. Uh -huh. Okay, we'll find Where it. Where it says add section, like, do you see that more next to the add section? Does it let you just give you, Where? like, an edit? Uh, right under your connect. So it says your name at the top. and then. Oh, more, 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 more. Oh, no. Wait, if you click add, add section... section? What if I and want to remove a section? If you go to accomplishments, if you like expand that, can you remove it? I don't think so. No. I just want to delete you. We're learning a lot about LinkedIn. Come on, LinkedIn. They must have changed this publications feature because I could have sworn that those used to be links. So if you work at LinkedIn, let us know. Oh my goodness, we only have like two minutes left. I wanted there... to bring up a few yeah. things before. Did Please. we talk about custom URLs? Did we? No. No. Because sometimes I'll see like these these LinkedIn profiles where it's yes. like a bunch of numbers and things like that. Do not let that be your profile. No, don't do that. Gwen has LinkedIn. You're talking about this one up here, right? The exactly. Gwyneth and this is something you have to claim, right? You don't get it by default. Same with YouTube. If you have over, mm -hmm. what is it? 100,000? 100, 100 subs. No, um, 100. It's yeah. worth getting that that custom URL um, for sure. Just looks so much more professional. You can even like this is one of the URLs, or actually something that I do appreciate as a recruiter because sometimes like I have a very unique name, so does Gwen. But if you're like Tyler Smith, sorry boyfriend, um, <laughs> then you probably want to get that custom URL because there are a lot of Tyler Smiths on LinkedIn, right? So getting that custom URL and putting in slash, it's the one case on a resume where I would say putting a URL is okay. Um, mm -hmm. Like sometimes people will put the LinkedIn logo, logo and they'll put in slash Chloe Condon or whatever that may be. Yeah. Um, and anything else, Gwen? We have the custom URLs. Custom URL, I would say make sure your profile is complete because yeah. LinkedIn rewards a complete profile um, and you're going to appear more in search and things like that. So make sure you take the time to really go, even if it's not a lot, if you don't have much, fill in each section that you can. Make sure you got a solid uh, headline. I think the headline is what's the, the like senior, for example, here's a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft Minds. Like, and those YouTuber. are all the ones right. that pop up here in search. So That's what I was going to say. Like, people also those are the viewed... Exactly. Those are the two things that people will see without clicking into your profile. So make sure your name is in there and then your, your, your headline and your headline, you can get a little more creative. Like I see some people sometimes highlight certifications and things like that. I'm not saying you necessarily have to do that, but it's like, you know, this is like kind of like a one shot, like guarantee people are going to see. 
And I feel like if the people and the people have also viewed aren't in the same field that you're looking to go into, maybe consider mm -hmm. changing your profile to better suit the, like there's no, imitation is the highest form of flattery, first of all. Don't copy and paste someone's LinkedIn description, of course. But of course. I typically will look at other people that I respect in the industry and be like, oh, I really like how they did this. I mean, look at Gwen's LinkedIn or my LinkedIn. Like, please take any ideas or ways to put your content on there like it's all it's all open to you to um actually Gwen I, I think you know we're we're about to be done here but mm -hmm. I feel like we only got the tip of the iceberg with LinkedIn I feel like we either have to do LinkedIn yeah. part two or we're going to stream more about LinkedIn on our own channels like maybe later this Something. week or next week because right, there's, there's so much to go into here um mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is there a link available so you can watch this again? Yeah, here I'm going to drop a link to where you can actually find all of our videos um, and subscribe to them and make sure that you get notified. But any final thoughts, Gwen, before we end up and play our music? Yeah, uh, definitely check us out next week. We are doing resumes and I think we might be doing some resume makeovers, maybe. Makeovers. Um, love me. I love me. Uh Makeover. We love a makeover on this show. I mean, I think when you and I should do makeovers, we'll do a live update of our LinkedIn's, get them in a good, mm -hmm. solid place, and share, share, show our work, so to speak. Um, Absolutely. But I just dropped a link in the chat, aka.ms slash how can we help the letter U. Um, that will take you to all of the up coming videos i feel like this time was too short i wanted more gwen I wanted this was more. this is great i love i love this these these sessions so much it's like it's what i look forward to oh favorite stream of the week um <laughs> we would like to connect with you on linkedin so follow us on our various channels uh gwen is youtube and all the ding dong day such a great YouTuber. <laughs> um i'm over on twitter quite a bit and we would love to chat more with you about tell us what you want to see on the show like what brought you here what you learned what you've applied and um definitely tweet us we pay attention to everything we Let tweet we love memes if you want to share any love linkedin meme. memes i feel like there's probably a lot of really good like i'd like to add you to my professional network on linkedin memes so please Share yeah, your favorite know. LinkedIn memes with us. Um, and with that, I guess I'll play our outro music. Shall we? See you next week. Bye.